You may be seated. So we are starting a new sermon series. It's a three-part series, and it's called Be the Change. Amen? Be the Change. T- today's part one, and it is created to serve. I just want to say that uh, last week, Pastor Tim did an amazing job at teaching us about our divine assignments. Amen? And uh, his message fits perfectly with the new series that we're beginning today. Again, it's Be the Change, and today is created to serve. We're going to start with Luke chapter 2, verses 46 to 49. Luke 2, 46 to 49 says this. Now, so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. This is talking about Jesus when he was 12 years old. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Now, the problem with this is that his family was in Jerusalem for the celebration. They were leaving, and they made it a few days before they figured out Jesus wasn't with them. (laughs) Amen? And all the parents said, amen make you feel good, right? You'd probably notice before three days. They got three days out and noticed that Jesus wasn't with them, right? And so they had to go back and look for him. And you can imagine, as a parent, you can imagine how frantically you would be going back. Is Santa here or what's going on back there? Can you check on that? Thank you. <laughs> it's Linda. <laughs> she's dressed as Mrs. Santa, and she's jingling back there, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. So Jesus, right, went into Jerusalem, and his parents and his family left, but he stayed behind. And so he was in the temple, right, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And so they're going back just like parents would do. What in the world were you doing? What were you thinking, kid? Right? Have you ever been there? Maybe you've been on the receiving end of that. And this is what Jesus said to them. Well, why, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Twelve years old. Twelve years old. And he was about his father's business. So young people, I want you to know that you're not too young to seek after God. Amen? You're not too young to be about the Lord's business. As Christians, we need to have this same mindset. Amen? We must be about our father's business. What business has the Lord called you to do in his house? See, God has this big picture plan, right? And we find our purpose in his big picture. It's always about him, amen? Not about us, it's about him. But God blesses us and allows us to come alongside of him and to serve him in this big picture plan that he has, amen? And so we need to, as Christians, right, we need to figure out what that plan is that God has and how God wants to use us in that big picture plan, amen? It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's a privilege to be able to jump into this and to be a part of what God is doing in the earth. Amen? That's not a small thing. And we shouldn't make it a small thing in our eyes. Amen? Jesus said, I must be about my Father's business. Again, what is God's plan in the earth? And what part is God calling you to play in his big picture plan? Where did they find Jesus? He was in the church. And I believe that many times or most of the time, this is where you discover your purpose and you serve the Lord, right? You don't just serve the Lord in the church. You serve the Lord in the church, but you also have realms of influence and different places where God wants you to impact outside of the church. Amen? But there's, there's a balance to that. There's, a, there's some place for you to serve in God's house. Amen? Because God's house is making an impact on the community, and we need to be a part of what God's doing. Amen? But then when we go out from God's house, we also 
You know, the Bible says that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit if you're saved. If you've believed in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, and you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so, when you go, the church goes, amen, because you are the church. And so, when you walk out of this place, the church goes with you because you are the church. And when you go out, you're supposed to take everything that the church is with you when you go. And those different realms of influence that God has given you, whether it be your family, whether it be your neighborhood, whether it be your workplace, whether it be your school campus, whatever that might be, wherever you find yourself, that's where you're supposed to make an impact for Jesus Christ. Amen? This is what it means to be about your Father's business. And all of us that are called Christian should be about our Father's business. So again, if you want to be about the Lord's business, you must find a place to plug in within the church and that place that you plug in in those different realms of influence that you have outside of the church. Again, you were created to serve. Let's go to John chapter 4, verse 31 to 34. You were created to serve. Starting in verse 31, it says, In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, now, you, you, I don't know, some of you might know when, where this is. This is when he was ministering to the woman at the well, right? And they were gone, and, and he was ministering to the woman at the well, and then they came back. He hadn't eaten. They were trying to get him to eat. And this is his response when they were trying to get him to eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Did you see what he just compared that to? He compared to doing God's will and God's work as to food that nourishes the body. Can you survive without food? No, it's, it's necessary. Food is necessary in this life. And he describes his service to the Father by saying that it's his food. He's always our example, right? His food, his nourishment, that which sustained him was to do the will of his Father and to finish his work. Tinkerbell's back. <laughs> Somebody got some duct tape? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to do the will of his Father and to finish his work. So many people are looking for satisfaction in the things of this world. See, God created you with a need to fulfill your destiny through serving him and serving others. There's a, there's a need in you. You've been created with it to serve him and to serve others. The only thing that are, will truly satisfy those who belong to him is serving him and serving others around us, carrying out the will of our Father in heaven. This is our nourishment. This is what satisfies us. We have been created to serve. Amen? In Mark chapter 10, verses 42 to 45, it says, But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise great authority over them. Yet it shall not be among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant." And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Who wants to be great out there in the kingdom of heaven? When we're talking about serving, we're not talking about you getting a position drawing attention to yourself, elevating yourself, or getting to boss other people around. 
It can never be about us. Again, it always has to be about Him. And when we're talking about serving, we're talking about becoming the slave of everyone around us. That's the heart of a servant. It's not to hold something over people. It's not to uh, control people. A ha- the heart of a servant is to serve, right? It's not to elevate yourself. It's to lower yourself and to serve, amen? Amen. Jesus washed the disciples' feet in an act of service towards them. We should be trying to outserve one another every day. We should be looking for opportunities to serve each other and to serve the world around us. This is what it means to be a servant, right? It means making sacrifices in life. It means giving up your life to reach others around you. I'm telling you today that you have been called and created to serve. Mark chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. Think about that. Slave of all. What does that mean to you? Really think about that. Meditate on that. Talk to God about that. Lord, what did you mean when you said we're supposed to be a slave of everybody around us if we want to be great within the kingdom? There's so many people that are trying to elevate themselves even in the Christian circles, so many people trying to elevate themselves. But what does it mean to be a slave of all? We really need to answer that question as Christians. Matthew 9, 36 to 38 says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest. Did you hear that? We're we're to pray that, that God sends out workers into his harvest. You know why? Because when you begin to pray for something, right? Did you know that oftentimes when you pray for something, God uses you as the answer to that prayer? And so when you pray for something, that means you invest in that thing. And when you invest in that thing, right, then God begins to pull and tug on your heartstrings and show you what you need to do as part of the answer to the prayer that you're praying. And so if you're praying for God to send out laborers, but you're sitting back and aren't serving, then God's going to pull on your heart. So he wants people to ask people to pray. It's easier to pray. Hey, could you pray for this, right? People will pray. People will take a little time and pray. Even if it's a five-minute prayer going out the door, people might pray. They're more likely to pray than to just jump in, right? But when you start praying, God gets a hold of your heart and begins to move on the inside of you and show you how important it is for you to step into service to Him. And when you're crying out for laborers to be loosed into the harvest, God begins to move on your heart. And so I ask you today as your pastor, please begin to pray for God to send laborers into the harvest. Amen? And I believe that as you are faithful to pray for God to send laborers into the harvest, I believe that God will touch your heart and show you what your part is. Amen? So even though serving ties into people's purpose, did you know that? That's our purpose. We're created to serve, right? Even though it ties into people's purpose, even though serving brings us satisfaction when we do it, even though we're created to serve, many people are deceived into thinking that they're too busy or too tired to serve God and to serve others. There's all kinds of other lies that they, people believe as well. You know, I'm sure that you've probably struggled with something somewhere along the way. Maybe you're not worthy. Maybe you're not fit. Maybe you're not qualified. All right? There's all kinds of lies that will come to you as to why you shouldn't serve. So pray. Lord, send laborers into the harvest. Pray with all of your heart. Lift up your voice to God. And I believe that God will work you through some of the lies that you might have believed throughout the years because each one of us has to be released. And I know that there's plenty of people here that are serving. Don't get me wrong. I know that we're serving. 
Man, I love it. I love to see people in action. I love to pe- see people serving. I love to be, see people making sacrifices in order to serve. That's powerful. That's the kingdom. Amen? We need to be kingdom-minded as a church. Amen? We need to be looking at this thing as, as, as being eternal and impactful in this world around us. We want to make a difference while we're here, don't we? We don't want to just go through this life and just squander it away, living for ourselves. We want to live for Him. Amen? We want to live for those around. We want to live for Jesus by serving those around us. Amen? That's what we want to do. The uh, the Apostle Paul said in in Philippians chapter 3 that if you have any other mindset, that God will make that right. Go ahead and read it. It it talks about him giving up everything that he might know Christ. And then he talks about forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead to grab on, right, to that prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So we're going forward. We're reaching out. We want to serve. We want to give our lives for the gospel, amen? That's what we want to do. Oh, no, that's just for the pastor. No, 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 it's not. It's for you. If you call yourself Christian, it's for you, amen? And I'm not saying you quit your job and go into five-fold ministry. That's not what I'm saying. Right where you're at, you're the, you're, you're the missionary to that mission field that you're in. You're a mission, missionary to your family. You're a missionary to your neighborhood. You're a missionary, right, to your job place. You're a missionary to your school campus. You're a missionary to wherever you find yourself. You are a missionary to that place. God has placed you there. Here at Transformation Church, we believe that every member is a minister and that God has a calling on your life to make an impact for His glory and for the advancement of His kingdom. Amen? So this is what we're talking about. God desires to use you in His plan. God desires to use you, to use me. And it's an honor that God has allowed us to come alongside of him and to serve, to see his plans and purposes fulfilled in the earth. See, a lot of people convince themselves that God understands all of those excuses. You remember the parable, and I don't have this in my notes, but, you know, the, the, the master of the house, they're having this big wedding banquet, right, sending out his workers into the highways and the byways, right, and to invite people to come in, and they, they go out to invite people to come in, and everybody has an excuse as to why they can't come. There's a lot of people that have an excuse to why they're not serving. But God's heart is still crying out to you. He's crying out to you. Find your place in my house. Find your place in my kingdom. Find your place in my heart. Find your place in how you can serve and how you can advance the kingdom wherever you go. Find your place. And don't make it difficult. Just jump in and start serving, then God will show you where to go and what to do. He cannot direct an immobile object. Hello? God cannot direct an immobile object. If you're just sitting still not doing anything, then God can't direct you. You have to start moving, and then God can direct you into the direction that He wants you to go in to what he wants you to do. It's okay if you serve someplace that you haven't been totally called to at that point, right? Maybe you're going to serve there for a time because God is a God of promotion, amen? And when you're faithful with little, then he brings you in to the more, amen? But there's humility in the little, and if you can't pass the humility test, you're not fit to serve in the kingdom of heaven. If you look back after you've put your hand to the plow, the Bible says you're not fit to serve in the kingdom of heaven. There's some tough things in there, isn't there? We just need to pray through those things and, and ask for God's grace in those areas. And he'll help us, amen? Because we, we all, we're, none of us are perfect. We all need help, amen? And God is so merciful and gracious. He'll help us. But we have to have a heart to want to do what's right in God's sight, amen? Do you know how important that is? That simple thing right there, to, to just want to do right in God's sight. And if you just want to do right in God's sight, God will help you. Amen? Amen. So again, some people convince themselves that God understands all of their excuses, and that's simply not true. They think that serving the Lord and others is going to take away from their lives rather than enhance their lives. So they hold on to everything. They hold on to their time. They hold on to their resources. They hold on to their gifts. You see, this is a lie from hell. 
because your very purpose is connected to you serving in and through the local church. And I'm telling you, you will never feel more alive than when you're serving. Amen? I'll tell you what, when you step into serving other people, that's when you're going to grow the most in your faith. It's true. Because God can take that and use that to grow you up in your faith. Again, the very purpose for which you were created cannot be fulfilled outside of a life consecrated to serve. You have been created to serve. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 tells us that, right? For we are God's handiwork. Did you know that you're God's handiwork? Isn't that cool? Say, I'm God's handiwork. That's pretty cool. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And these good works were prepared ahead of time. Before one of your days came to pass, God knew every single one of them and had them written down in his book. These good works that have been prepared ahead of time for you to do, right? And, and you know where this passage of Scripture comes from. God created each one of us to do good works. We know that we are saved by grace through faith. We don't do good works to be saved. That's foolish. Because our, our good works are as filthy rags before him in that context. We cannot earn our way into heaven. And that's why Jesus came. And if we could earn our way into heaven, then Jesus died for nothing. But we know that that's not true. We needed Jesus to come and to die on that cross for us because we couldn't do it. So we don't get into heaven because of good works that we do. We don't get into heaven because of how much money we give. We don't get into heaven or have a relationship or be in good standing with God for those things, right? We do good works because we are saved, not to get saved. We do good works because we are saved, right? And when you are saved, you are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And so you do good works because you're saved, man. I don't know about you, but my salvation makes me happy. If I start getting down, I just remind myself I'm saved. Amen? You get down, just remind yourself you're saved, man. You're going to heaven. You're going to live for eternity with him. How can you be sad when you know the truth? Amen? Sometimes it's a little stirring up, I know. Sometimes the enemy's attacking us and pushing us down and trying to beat us up. But I'm telling you, if you remind him of that, God will give you the victory, amen? The joy will come eventually if you just keep reminding yourself of that. If you keep saying it out loud, Lord, I thank you that I'm saved. God, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Lord, thank you for doing what I couldn't do. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit. I thank you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I thank you that I've been set free, amen? For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. See, these are things to be happy about. David said, why so downcast, oh, my soul? Put your hope in God, amen? So when you're getting in that place where the enemy's piling stuff on you and making you feel horrible about yourself, begin to speak life over you, yourself. Speak to your soul. Command it to be happy, amen? Command it to put its delight in the Lord, amen? amen. See, this is what we do. We go after God together. He is so good. He is so gracious, we make mistakes. We do all kinds of things wrong. We believe things that we shouldn't. We allow things to impact us that we shouldn't allow to impact us. But God is so good. Amen? He's given us His Word, which is truth. And when we take His Word and apply it to our situations, life comes. Joy comes. Peace comes. Victory comes through God's Word, through trusting Him. That his, he's not a man that he should lie. So every promise that he's written down in his word is true. And we can go to him with this promise. He asks us, he tells us to remind him of his promises. It's an awesome relationship that we have going on. But we are God's handiwork. And look at that. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. I'm telling you today that you were created for service. Amen? 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. I just have a minute to get into this, but I want to hit not just the, the fact that you've been created to serve, but I want to hit the, the motive behind it. Amen? Because this is important. Because you can serve, 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 and serve, but in the end, it can be all for naught if you have the wrong motive. We found that in 1 Corinthians 13, right? 12, 13. 
You know, we, it's 13, right after that love stuff. And it, right, right before that, it talks about all the people doing all the different things, giving all the gifts and doing all the good works. But it was for nothing because they had the wrong motive, right? 1 John 4.19 says this, We love him because he first loved us. Why do we love him? Because he first loved us. That's right. We don't serve God to prove our love for him. We serve God because he loves us and we love him. We're not serving God to get his favor. We're not serving God to please him. God is the one who initiates his love for us. God is the one who initiates his love for us. And then we love God because he first loved us. Don't get this wrong. Don't be going out there trying to bust your hump to please God to get him to love you. Because that's how the world works, you understand? That's how the world works is you have to earn that love. You have to earn that favor. That's not love. That's not divine love. That's not heavenly love. That's not God's love. He loved us, right, first. And because he loved us first, we love him in return. I love this idea. I love to think about this and meditate on this. Again, the only right motive for service in the kingdom of heaven is our love and loyalty to our king. Amen? We love him because he first loved us. Listen, we will give our lives to him to the degree that we see his love for us and love him in return. Did you hear that? We will give ourselves, we will give our lives to him to the degree that we have a revelation of his love for us. This is important. Our capacity to love God is rooted in our revelation of his love for us. Our capacity to love God is rooted in our revelation of His love for us. Who wants to love God more? Do you want to love God more? The way you love God more is getting a deeper revelation of His love for you. And when you get a deeper revelation of His love for you, it increases your capacity to love Him in return. How do you do that? Well, there's all kinds of different ways to do that. One aspect of that we find in the Scriptures where it says that he who has been forgiven much loves much. Amen? He who has been forgiven much loves much. And here's the problem that many people have in the church, or I should say some people have in the church. Well, I, I was pretty good growing up. God forgave me of my sins, and, and I'm saved, but not like that person over there. Well, they were drug addicts and prostitutes and everything else, and boy, did they really get forgiven. What you don't realize is that we've all been forgiven much. Amen? If you could only understand that you're not just forgiven of maybe some things that you did, although those things that you did, right, those things that you did nailed Jesus to the cross. And so they're not light. You don't compare yourselves with yourselves for in so doing you're unwise, right? You don't, you don't compare your story with somebody else's story because your story is your story. And your story is just as powerful as everybody else's story if you really understood what God did in your life, what God did for you, amen? So you just need to press in a little bit and start asking God about that. God, what have I been forgiven about? And God will, God will open up your understanding to see all the things that you've been forgiven for. You weren't just forgiven for the things that you did. You were forgiven for the things you would have done if you had the opportunity to do them, amen? And so there's all kinds of things that you've been forgiven for. Everybody's been forgiven for the same thing. Everybody's been forgiven for the sin in the world. And to be honest with you, the greatest sin in the world is simply not giving your life to Him. Amen? Not serving Him. Not living for Him. That's the biggest sin in the world, right? You've all been forgiven tremendously. And when you get a glimpse of how much you've been forgiven... 
Him, he who for, has been forgiven much, loves much. Amen? Get a hold of that. Increase your capacity to love God in return. And as we're talking about this, right, since love is our foundation and motive for service, right, love is our foundation and motive for service, we can only serve God to the degree that we understand and have experienced His radical love for each one of us. We can only serve God to the degree that we see His love for us because love is the foundation of our service. Now, you can go out and make yourself busy and do all kinds of things without seeing God's love for you, but then you're doing that for some other motive. And if you're doing it for some other motive, it's no good. It will benefit you nothing. We need to have a revelation of why we do what we do. We need to have a revelation of why we serve God. I'm so excited for what God has done for me. I just want to run out and serve Him. I want to do more for Him, right, because of what He's done for me. Amen? Because of how much He's loved me, I want to live for Him. That's the key. We love God because He first loved us. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, we said that, right, since love is our foundation and motive for serving, love is the platform on which we are launched to serve, amen? That's our motive, right? 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 and 15 say this, for the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. <laughs> Woo! We are compelled by love to preach the gospel. We are compelled by love to serve God. Compelled by his love poured out to us. Without restraint, without limit, God's love has been poured out to us. And because God loved us, we are compelled by that same love to love the people around us and to serve God by loving them. This is God's order. We were compelled by love to preach the gospel. Some of us don't have enough love in our lives to get past taking care of ourselves. Go ahead, pull your feet back if you need to. Because this is for real. This is true. Some of us are so fixed on ourselves and all of our problems that we can't see past ourselves to the world around us that God has called us to serve. They were compelled by love to preach the gospel. Compelled by love. Why? Because love is action. Love is action. The reason why I want a greater revelation of God's love for me is because I want to be able to love God more. Amen? And my love for Him will be demonstrated by my actions. My love for Him will be demonstrated by what I do. I don't serve to try to earn God's love, but because I've been loved so well, I serve. Amen? Romans 5.8 tells us that love is action, right? But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God didn't just say, I love you. He stepped out of heaven and onto the earth. He was tortured. He was beaten. He was hung on a cross, and he died for each one of us to demonstrate his love for us. He gave himself for us. Amen? Right? Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. This is the love of God. Love is action. Love is sacrifice. Jesus loved us and demonstrated that love through that act of sacrifice. My love for him will increase my ability to offer my life back to him as a living sacrifice. I will only be able to offer my life to him as a living sacrifice through action. When I see his love for me, and I'm so smitten by his love for me that I demonstrate my love for him back to him. Then I become a living sacrifice for him. A living sacrifice for him. I think the church has forgotten about being a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. 
Romans chapter 12 talks about being a living sacrifice. Right after it talks about being conformed into his, transformed, right, by the renewing of our mind. This church is built on that passage of Scripture and on a couple other passages of Scripture. It's built on that, the idea of transformation that comes through the renewing of the mind. But before that, it talked about being a living sacrifice and that this is our reasonable service to God. Apart from a greater revelation of his love for me, I am unable to offer my life back to him beyond my present experience. Please listen to this. It applies to you. Apart from a greater revelation of his love for me, I am unable to offer my life back to him beyond my present level of experience. And I don't want to stay where I'm at. I want to go further in God. I want to give more to God. And I can't give more to God unless I have a deeper revelation and understanding of His love for me. So we need to be going after God for a deeper revelation of His love for each one of us that expands the capacity of our ability to love Him back and to be a living sacrifice to Him. You were created to serve. This is the key to being able to serve properly in the kingdom of heaven is a revelation of God's love for us that... that, that, that thrusts us into the harvest field to serve God and to serve those around us. This is what God has called you to. As Christians, we should always be pressing in for a deeper revelation of God's love for us in order to expand our ability to love Him in return by sacrificing our lives to fulfill His passion. And His passion is what? To seek and to save the lost. The disciples were compelled by love to preach the gospel. They made great personal sacrifices as the result of the depth of their revelation of God's love for them. Come on, read about their personal sacrifices that they made. They gave themselves to the gospel. They gave themselves to the Lord because they had a revelation of His love for them that thrust them into that lifestyle. Our only motive for serving God and serving others is our revelation of Christ's love for us. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Do you remember that? Peter had denied Christ three times, and Jesus was bringing him back in. He was restoring him, right? And the question that Jesus asked Peter after Peter had denied him three times, the question that Jesus, he could have asked all kinds of things. He could have said all kinds of things, but what did he do? He asked him a question. He said, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And what did Peter say? Lord, yes, I love you. And it happened again and again and again. And the last time, Peter said, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus responded by saying, feed my sheep. Take care of my lambs, right? That's what he said. Feed my sheep. Serve. If you love me, serve. Not not to get my love, but because you love me. Because I love you and you love me. Serve. That's what he told Peter. Serve. And Peter was restored as a disciple in that moment. But he was giving us the revelation that if we love him, we serve him with our lives. It was the disciples' revelation of God's love for them that thrust them into service. So Jesus right now is asking us today, do you love me? Come on, quiet yourself down. We love that the kids are having fun, but focus on Jesus right now. Jesus is standing and asking you. He's standing at the door of your heart, and he's asking you, do you love me? How are you going to answer him? How has God called you to serve in and through the church and outside of the church? What part has he called you to play in the big picture that he has? If you are a Christian, it means that you are a servant. If you are a servant, it means you serve God and you serve those around you. And so my question is, how are you serving the Lord by serving others today? I'm just putting out this challenge. There are actually two challenges that I have for us today. Challenge number one is for those who are already serving within the church. Guys, if you're already serving with the church, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for serving. Thank you for the sacrifices that you make. Now I want you to pray about your next steps and how you could be more effective in your serving here at the church and outside of the church. I want you to identify and eliminate all obstacles that would keep you back from taking 
these steps that the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. I'm not pressuring anybody. I don't want you to be pressured because if you get pressured to get into a position, it's just going to cause me more work later on. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be filled with the love of God. I want you to be excited to come here every Sunday to serve. Amen? So there's no pressure on you to serve except for you to get together with the Holy Spirit and to ask Him what your next steps are. The other group that I want to hit today are those who aren't currently serving in the church because I'm hoping that you're serving out there. But if you aren't serving in the church or out there, I want you to pray about how the Lord would like to use you to serve others and advance His kingdom. And again, I want you to identify and eliminate any obstacles that the enemy is putting in your path to stop you from entering into a lifestyle of service to God and to others. Amen? As you're praying, I want you to write down what comes to your heart, what comes to your mind in the context of serving. And then here's what I'd like to do. I'd like you to bring any of those ideas with you next Sunday as you come. Because next Sunday, you're going to be giving an opportunity to discover some of the different ministries within Transformation Church and to see where you might plug in in those ministries. As we open up the ministry fair next Sunday, again, prayerfully consider signing up to serve in one of the areas presented. I believe that it's time for the church to rise up. Amen? See, we have a vision of growing as a church. We have a vision of impacting the the community around us more and more and more. And we're going to do that. And so at some point, we're going to go to two services. And when we go to two services, man, we need more people. We need more people to serve. We need more people to impact this area around us. Amen? And you're a part of what God's doing here. And we just commend you for the work that you've already done. And we challenge you to take the next steps that God has for your life. It's time for the church to rise up, step out in faith, and fulfill our destinies. Amen? So today we talked about how we're created to serve. We looked at how we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works that were prepared in advance for us to do. Again, I I mentioned Psalm 139 that tells us before one of our days came to pass, God knew every single one of them had them written down in His book. Right? So there, were, there was a plan already in place for you before one of your days came to pass. And so as a Christian now, as a human being now, we need to press in and discover what God's plan is. The very one who knit you together in your mother's womb has a plan for your life. Don't you want to discover what that plan is? Pastor Tim talked about an assignment that God has for you. Amen? Do you want to fulfill your assignment in Christ? The first step in God's plan for you to fulfill your assignment in Christ, to fulfill your destiny, is to receive Him into your life as your personal Lord and Savior for the forgiveness of your sins. Maybe you're listening to my voice right now, whether you're here in this room or listening online. You're listening to my voice right now, and you've never taken this step. You've never surrendered your life to Him. I want to challenge you that this is the very purpose for you being here on this earth. It's the very purpose that God knit you together in your mother's womb and breathed the breath of life into you was that you might have a relationship with Him. Right now, I'd just like us to bow our heads, close our eyes, and search our hearts. Where are you in this journey with God? Where are you? Have you surrendered your life to Him? Have you stepped into the pages of that book that He has written for your life? If you've not taken that step, I want to give you the opportunity to repeat a prayer after me today as a confession of your faith. The Bible says that when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then are you saved. For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? It's not God's will that any should perish. That means go to hell. But that all should come unto repentance. Ask for forgiveness for their sins. Ask Jesus Christ to come into their life and be their Lord and Savior. 
If you've never taken that step, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. Again, whether you're here or listening online, I want you to pray with me right now. Just say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life completely to you. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins and to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. God, help me to live for you each and every day of the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, God did exactly what you just asked him to do. The Bible says that you've been taken from the kingdom of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of his dear son. The Bible says that to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become children of God. If you just prayed that prayer, you are a child of God. For the Bible says that he who has the Son of God has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe so that you might know that you have eternal life. You can know before you go that you have eternal life. If you prayed that prayer and meant it in your heart, I just encourage you to jump in and begin to serve the Lord. Jump in and begin to go to church. Jump in and begin to read your Bible in the book of John. Jump in. Begin to study out God's Word and ask God for help. Amen? We have a book that's coming up on the screen right now called Now What? And we want to make that available to you. It's right out here before you go into the main hallway on the table. Just grab one of those Now What? books. It'll help you to navigate through the next days and weeks of your Christian, new Christian life. There's a phone number on the back. If you have any questions, just text or call that number. We'd love to answer any questions that you have as you read through that booklet believe it'll be a blessing to you. If you're listening online, there's a place in that post where you can click and leave a message for us. We'd love to get that book out to you as well. We believe it'll be a blessing to you in your new life in Christ. Hallelujah. As the ministry team comes forward this morning, I know we're running a little bit late, but I just want to offer prayer to anybody who needs prayer this morning. So the ministry team's going to come up. We're going to offer prayer. We're going to sing one last song if you need to go. We understand you can go ahead and go, but we don't want to leave here without praying for one another. Amen? And so if you have any other prayer needs that you need to be addressed, we invite you to come on up. We're going to sing one more song. As I said, Pastor Tim's going to close us in prayer. So let's go ahead and stand and worship him now. All things have passed.